Hello and welcome to a retouching tutorial of uh, one Quinton Shaw watch which I did for a client recently. Uh, there's going to be three parts. The first one is going to be the first view and here are the three final images. Okay, step one, uh, going to Lightroom. All of the images were shot in RAW. Uh, I used focus stacking in Helicon Focus and I'm just picking here the three final images which are the stacked images and my raw workflow is basically going to take the uh, the exposure and all general adjustments and then I'm going to take the final images into Photoshop. So one of the first changes is to use the tone curve to adjust the contrast of the image. Uh, I've also got a little bit of colouring in there, but I'll take that out and take it to black and white in Photoshop. Uh, as you can see, the image was shot holding wire, and when I cut that out in Photoshop, we'll show you later. All I'm trying to do in this portion is really to match uh, the contrast and the look of each image, and then crop them down to relatively the same size, straighten them up, and then we can drop them straight into Photoshop for the main retouching. Once I'm reasonably happy with these, just get ready to export them. Export them all as 16-bit TIFF files. Save them all, ready for retouching. So, step two is into Photoshop. Just opening the first image up. And the very first job uh, I need to do is cut the image out from the background. Um, the final images are going to be supplied as PNG files with no background at all, so I need to make sure I had a very clean selection all the way around the watches. Uh, these watches, because they've got the, the metal links in the straps, needed a, a lot of attention to detail. I was also making sure to keep just inside of the uh, this strap. This is because we don't want to have a halo or see any of the background visible once the final image is cut out. Obviously, I had to go around every individual link in this, so it's a time consuming process, but it's definitely worth it. Um, if you need any tutorials on the pen tool, um, just have a look on YouTube. I reckon the ones from Flurn with Aaron Ness, uh, they're really well explained, and I'll teach you how to, to use a pen tool effectively. It's one of the best tools for cutting out objects in Photoshop. As you can see, making sure to go around all the tiny details. Once past the strap, it gets a lot easier and cut around these big shapes. Generally try and use as few points as possible. Hence the, the large curve around the watch. We can do just a, a couple of points and a big curve because it's a, a round object. As you notice there, I've cut round the crown. I'll cut that out separately in a moment so that I can move that back in towards the, the body of the watch. Obviously, watch photography, uh, the hands are usually placed at the 10 past 10 position. And to do that, you've got to pull the crown out. So, as I wanted to make it look like the watch was, uh, that the crown was in, I had to do that in post production. These areas I'm again making sure I cut just inside of the image. You can see just behind the area that I'm cutting out there's a blurry section which is actually the back section of the strap. Uh, this I didn't focus stack because I didn't need that and I always knew I was going to cut that out in the final image. Again the big curves nice and easy to do with a pen tool. You get a nice crisp clean selection. There we go, that's the selection made, and just taking out the little areas around the back of the strap as well. We'll take a little bit more detail to even them up on the left hand side of the watch later on. 
So with the selection made, I feather the selection by 0.3 pixels just to give it a little softer edge. And then as I said, here we come doing the crown. I'm doing it, make this as a, se a separate path so I can take it as a separate selection later and then move that crown in. Again, feather selection by 0.3 pixels and then just move the crown in. Duplicate that portion of the layer, then delete the layer behind it and position it as I need to. Now I've taken the selection all around the watch and duplicated it from the main, main image, which gives us the cutout. I just in a, dropped in a couple of backgrounds. I wasn't sure what the client was going to do in terms of background because they'd asked for it with no background at all. So I put in a white background and a black background just to see how it looked. Next portion is one of the biggest jobs in uh, product photography is cleaning. Now these watch, watches were brand new when I got them. They were handled very carefully with gloves all the time. Uh, but even so, there's tiny specks of dust that you can't actually see with the naked eye. But as soon as you get some lights on them, particularly lights from the side, uh, all the specks of dust on the face are shown up. So I'm just running around here, obviously this is speeded up, running around here with the healing brush tool and occasionally the clone stamp tool just to get rid of as many pieces of dust as possible. As you can see on the areas uh, that I've already done, it makes a big difference. And this is where attention to detail really does pay off. It takes quite a long time to do this, but once you get in the swing of it, it's not too bad. And work through methodically. You can see I'm working around the watch in a clockwise fashion, just to make sure that I don't miss any spots. Working around the outer areas first, then I'll move into the inner area once I've completed that. Here we go. Same process on the inner area. Using a healing brush just to take away all the specks of dust. There are other methods to do this, as with Photoshop. Uh, I could have used a dust and scratches layer and then masked it out. Um, but it's a, it's a personal preference. One of those things in Photoshop, there's so many ways to do each different task. So there we go, base cleaning is finished. A few more little portions on the strap. And now I took a black and white layer. This is a black watch, I didn't want any colour cast on the strap itself uh, or on the outside of the watch. However, there is some colour in the face. So just make a selection and then mask out that area so you can keep the colour in the face itself. Then we take a curves layer just to increase the contrast on the face, darken it down a little bit, brighten out the highlights. And when I shot this, I shot this uh, from directly above and on the lower portions of some of the hour markers there is a bit of a shadow, which is actually the shadow of the lens, so I'm just taking one of the hour markers from the top and then dropping it into these bottom ones just so there's a little bit more detail in there, a bit more gradient across those hour markers. Just using a blend if sliders there, just to make sure I get a nice seamless blend of that, because a little black edge around it. And always going back to check how the final image looks. Now, as I said, on the right hand side there of the strap, we've got a cutout just because I was slightly off centre when I shot it, again trying to avoid reflections in the face. So make another selection with the pen tool, and then Again, feather it by 0.3 pixels, and then just cut that out. And then make a slight blur on this area, just to make it blend in more nicely. And again, just add in a little bit of blur there. Just to make it a little bit more realistic. And the same on the bottom, the pen selection made a very harsh edge. So just taking that selection and blurring off the edges. Now again I want to make some adjustments to the face but not to the hands, just want to make some adjustments to the background. Um, so using the colour select tool to get an accurate selection of all the features on the face and then I can darken down the background of the face without affecting any of the details on the hands, the hour markers or the important logo. A 
can see there adjusting the contrast of the outer area of the watch again using the mask from the center so I'm not affecting the center on this but just on the outside portions just taking that curves lane dark enough so don't lose the contrast on the strap itself so I have nice dark areas on the strap and again just using the brush and a mask to make sure I get the contrast that I want that lovely gradient from the light top and bottom to the dark at the sides And final adjustments to the contrast in the face and then and take a merge visible or stamp visible layer and then use a high pass filter to apply some sharpening and then just use it selectively brushing back in where I'd like to sharpen up some of the details on the strap and the text So there I have it, I added in a background in Photoshop which is just a black background with a radial gradient and then a slight shadow underneath. We have the first image. So I hope you've enjoyed that and it's been useful seeing how I retouch these luxury watches. Coming up in part two will be another angle of the watch. If you've got any questions feel free to put them in the comments below.